to talk about the Rover 3.5 liter V8 engine, which is sitting in front of me. Uh, in a dis disassembled state, you see parts on the workbench here and parts under the shelves. Uh, this particular engine I purchased uh, partially rebuilt from a reputable uh, automotive repair house here in uh, Corte Madera. And this uh, 3.5 liter engine was probably built around 1967 68. One of the things to look out for with a 3.5 liter Rover V8 is that with these uh, pressed in steel cylinder liners, uh, which for the most part work just fine in this aluminum block engine, uh, if the engine ever overheats, there can be an issue where that cylinder liner gets coolant behind it, between it and the aluminum, expand and contract at different rates. If that engine overheats and that coolant gets into that space, basically it acts as a lubricant and it allows the pistons to push the liner or the sleeve up and down inside the block while the engine is running. Uh, I know this firsthand because I've had it happen to me and one of the reasons that this engine is sitting here and I'm starting to assemble it is that the engine I have in my car currently another Rover 3.5 liter V8 uh, apparently at some point in time overheated and one of the sleeves one of the liners is actually sitting recessed below the cylinder head deck on the block so that aluminum block will probably go to the aluminum recycler uh, because to get it fixed costs probably in the neighborhood of three to four thousand dollars and the only people I can find that will fix it on the US or on the East Coast I'm on the West Coast so I have an engine here and uh, the next thing we're gonna do as you see I got my studs in it uh, the crank is in it the pistons are in it the new rings uh, there's cro nice cross hatching in each one of the cylinders and uh, it's got a nice crane cam the heads for this engine are actually at the cylinder head rebuilding shop. As soon as I get those back, I'll put this guy together and we're going to stick it in the car.